with the coalition today deciding to oppose Labor's proposed misinformation laws. The combating misinformation and disinformation bill should be rejected, not just by the opposition, but every thinking Australian who values free speech and remembers the last three years. Now, Labor will claim that the bill will tackle misinformation by empowering ACMA to find digital platforms up to $6.88 million. But the government's proposal is so outrageously Orwellian that it has already been lampooned internationally on the very platforms that the government wants to censor. Even best-selling author Dr Jordan Peterson has mocked the proposal, writing, hey, peasants, your opinions, hell, your facts are fake news. That was his message to Australia. Minister for Communications Michelle Rowland must think Australians are uniquely stupid to need such protection against disinformation and misinformation. Labor's bill is not only anti-free speech, but it's sinister and the sort of backward policy you'd expect in despot nations not a free country that values democratic principles. The last three years have taught us that sometimes the biggest producers of dangerous disinformation are government agencies, public health bureaucrats and the so-called expert class. During the pandemic, we were fed a steady diet of hyperbole, half-truths and straight-out lies while some of the leading genuine experts, including infectious disease experts from Oxford, Stanford and Harvard medical schools, well, they were silenced, censored and smeared because they questioned the effectiveness of lockdowns. Mask mandates, school closures and a raft of other disastrous public health responses to COVID-19. When it mattered most, voices like that of Professor Jay Bhattacharya, Martin Kuldorf, and Sunetra Gupta were heavily censored by social media platforms at the behest of government agencies. You see, what they said was considered dangerous disinformation in 2020 and 2021, but well, it's become widely accepted as fact in 2023. Meanwhile, we were all told COVID vaccines would stop transmission and that playground bans, curfews, outdoor mask mandates would keep us all safe. Here in Victoria, Premier Dan Andrews even scolded us for watching the sunset at the beach. That was a threat to public health. None of that was considered misinformation. In fact, those of us who railed against the mass insanity and pointed to the societal, economic and health costs of these measures were accused of undermining the safety of the community and censored or sometimes even banned from social media sites. Instead of learning from this shameful period, the Anthony Albanese government is determined to double down on the lunacy.